So we are going to take the integral from 0 to 1 of the 20th root of 1 minus x to the 18th minus the 18th root of 1 minus x to the 20th dx. Now we're not going to be able to do this integral in some kind of elementary fashion and then subtract it from the answer we get over here. We're going to have to find some relationship between these two that makes them maybe cancel out or gives us something nice in our integral. In order to do this, let's look at the function y equals the 20th root of 1 minus x to the 18th. Because we see there's a 20 and 18 here. And over here, it's the exact same function, but the 18 and 20 are switched, which makes us think there's some kind of relationship here. If we take the 20th power on both sides here, we get y to the 20th equals 1 minus x to the 18th. And if we isolate x to the 18th, add it over here, and then subtract y to the 20th, we get x to the 18th equals 1 minus y to the 20th. Take the 18th root on both sides, and what we'll see is x is in fact the 18th root of 1 minus y to the 20th. What this is telling us is that our function here, the second function, is the inverse of the first function. Now let's see if we can use that information to help us out in our integral. So this is f. This is going to be some kind of f inverse. And let's take a look at the graph of this function. So let's say we want to graph the 20th root of 1 minus x to the 18th. So that's our y here. This is x. If we plug in 0 here, we're going to get the 20th root of 1, which is just 1. And if we plug in 1, we'll get the 20th root of 1 minus 1. So the 20th root is 0 is just a 0. So this point is on our graph, and this point is on our graph. And we don't know exactly what this looks like, but somehow we're going to get from 1 to 0. And we also know that this is a strictly decreasing function. So the bigger x gets, the smaller our answer is going to get all the way down until we get to x equals 1. So this is what our graph looks like. This first integral is just going to be taking the area as x increases from 0 to 1 all the way through there. So it's just going to be the area of whatever shape is drawn out by the curve. Let's look at what this function is. We're looking at the inverse, and it's going from 0 to 1. But what we can think about is it doesn't matter if we put in an x here or if we put in a y. So what if we think about the integral from 0 to 1 of f inverse of y dy? So this time y is going from 0 to 1. And that's the same as taking the inverse x going from 0 to 1. And as it goes up, we're just taking f inverse of y, the x value, and we're tracing out this curve, finding the area. Doing this area is giving us the same shape as doing the other area. So what we're doing is we're taking some area value and subtracting the same thing. And what do we get if we take something and then subtract it from itself? Well, the only answer we could get is 0. So in fact, because these two functions are inverses, and because of the way that curve is shaped between 0 and 1, the integral of this minus this is just going to give us 0.